The following is a presentation of Molestar Communications. Hello everyone, I'm Howard Cosell. My adoration for the sports of football, baseball, and professional boxing are legendary. But the predominant sport in my life has always been that of professional ice hockey. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the all-new Howard Cosell hockey video coming up right here. Cut. Uh Jim, just be yourself, okay? Hi, I'm John Candy. <laughs> I am. <laughs> anyway, being a native Canadian, I've always been a, a big hockey fan. <laughs> big. <laughs> a hell of a goalie, too, actually. <laughs> anyway, this is my new hockey video. <laughs> yeah, hockey. <laughs> Jim, we agreed. No impressions. Champagne wishes and caviar dreams of the ice styles of the rich and famous. Stay tuned for a sumptuous, glamorous, behind-the-scenes look at the world of professional ice hockey. I'm Robin Leach. I'm talking loud, and I don't know why. Coming up... Jim, we... please, do it straight. I'm Jim Ralph, and as a goaltender, I spent seven years in hockey's minor leagues. What I'm about to show you over the next little while is a slightly different look at the game of hockey. I'll take you to ice level to listen in on conversations never before heard by the average hockey fan. I will introduce to you the first ever Dope Slap Awards, and you'll also see some of the greatest hockey interviews ever recorded. We'll have all this and a lot more, so stay with us. This is my look at hockey, a brutal game. Nobody's gonna buy that. Seven years in the minors. I haven't even told my parents yet. The national anthems. To hockey players, it's more than just showing their respect to the great countries they're playing in. To a hockey player, it's the lull before the storm. A moment of calm reflection to get prepared for the task at hand. Personally, I've got to admit, uh, I always loved the national anthems because it was uh, usually the, the only chance I got to stand during a hockey game. So, to start things off, I think it's only fitting that we begin things with the national anthem. Now we Canadians tend to be a little formal when it comes to honoring other countries. Although I will admit our fire regulations are a little lenient. Now shouldn't these guys be in the Persian Gulf? Even Kurt and Goldie know the words to this song. Come on Hexy, you're supposed to use the washroom before the game. I wonder how long these two little devils will stay put. Now let's see, left skate, right skate, uh, pants, what else, sweater, and uh, oh yeah, jock. Yeah, that's important, good. Where's Tommy Hunter when you need him? Wow, televised games make me nervous. Now what kind of note was that? This guy must have gone to the Roseanne Barr Academy of National Anthems. Well, Andy Moog of the Boston Bruins is ready for battle. And Andy Van Helleman, take the hat off before the anthem. I know earlier I said that I always loved the national anthems, but to, uh, to be quite honest with you, uh, I always had brutal games after I heard those songs. Anyway, 
Probably by now, you're wondering uh, why somebody like me is actually hosting a hockey video. So I think it's only fitting that maybe we sit back now and I can fill you in on some of the greatest moments of my hockey career. And, uh, well, I guess we might as well start with the, the greatest game I ever played, which was uh, Toledo, Ohio, 1983. I'll never forget it. The following is an election update. Good evening, I'm Bob McAdory. We interrupt this program for the following news special. The national election results are now final and official. Don Cherry, former NHL coach and Hockey Night in Canada broadcaster, has led his party to a landslide victory. We will bring you more on Prime Minister Cherry's first address to the nation as details become available. In other developments, unconfirmed reports have thousands of Swedish Canadians flooding travel agencies seeking information on leaving the country. Now, back to our programming. Now, off the webbing, over my shoulder, out the other side, <laughs> the buzzer sounds and uh, we get the win, 13 to 12. And after a, a bit of a rough start, uh, I shot him out in the third. All right, enough about me for now. I'm sure most hockey fans are quite familiar with uh, players' reactions after scoring a goal. Uh, Wayne Gretzky does the little pump thing, uh, Mike Flino does the leap. Uh, Tiger Williams always used to do that stupid thing after he scored a goal. Uh, actually, all of them kind of ticked me off, but what about the goaltenders? What I'm going to do now is let you see the goaltenders' reactions. You know, sometimes it's hard to believe your own eyes. Now, Darren Poop of the Buffalo Sabres will see this, but he won't believe it. Deny, deny, deny. Now this is my favorite reaction. If somebody beats you, leave the scene of the crime. Now it's awful tough to fool a good goal judge. Or is it? Darren Poop a great save, right? Well, let's watch again. He fooled him. He brings it back out over the line. No goal. Now, if you're having your problems, you can always check faulty equipment. There's got to be a few holes in there somewhere. But be easy on yourself. The net, the glass, or even your head. Just sweep it away, or even pray. Now, a goaltender can sometimes start his own wave. But if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Effective, Billy, but let's work on the form. Now you can just shrug it off. Of course, in Chicago you can shrug it off too, but never ever look to the bench after a goal. If you've got a few Stanley Cups under your belt like Billy Smith, you can just tell him who you are. Of course, that's not always the most effective method. The best reaction of all would have to be when somebody scores a goal on you, Eliminate them. Or if somebody's just irritating you a bit, eliminate them. But always, always keep your cool. Earlier I told you about the greatest hockey game I ever played, but I'm sure there's still some people wondering what credentials I really have to, to host a hockey video. Well, let's start with all the great places I called home throughout the course of my career. For example, there was Denver, Baltimore, Kamloops, Victoria, uh, Springfield uh, twice, Milwaukee. The following is an election update. Good evening, I'm Bob McAdory. We interrupt this program for the following news special. Newly elected Prime Minister Don Cherry will enter the National Press Center in Ottawa for his first official press conference as the nation's leader. For an update from Ottawa, here is correspondent Brian Smith. Thank you. We're outside the Parliament buildings in Ottawa where news of Don Cherry's landslide election has the nation's capital in a frenzy. Mr. Cherry's press aide Cam Neely advised reporters that the newly elected Prime Minister will hold his first press conference within the hour. From Ottawa, Brian Smith, we now return you to our regular programming. Binghamton and uh, uh, Newmarket. Uh, anyway, uh, one of the greatest things about 
playing professional hockey is actually being in on all the, the jock terminology. Uh, to give you an example, uh, my last two years pro, the great catchphrase was a dope slap. Now this was given out whenever somebody on the ice screwed up or even whenever somebody off the ice said something that wasn't all that intelligent. If that happened, then somebody would quite nicely come over to them and with their hand, give them a nice dope slap on the forehead. Now, uh, being a goaltender, of course, I was never subjected to that kind of abuse because we I now present to you the first ever Dope Slap Awards. That hurt. In the category of cranky coaches, the second runner-up goes to Montreal Canadiens coach Pat Burns. Now, I hope you folks at home can't read lips here. Paul Stewart can't hear a thing. Pat's not happy. The first runner-up goes to Toronto Maple Leaf coach Doug Carpenter, who's not just trying to say hello to the Detroit Red Wing bench. And the winner, Detroit Red Wing coach Jacques Demers, who, believe it or not, is not doing the hippie hippie shake. Now, Jacques's not a happy camper, and he is out of there. In the category of shooting stars, second runner up, Mario Lemieux. Great goal, right? Sorry, Mario, it's got to cross that red line first. First runner-up, the great one himself, Wayne Gretzky. A deacon a goal, right, Wayne? Well, off the sticker on the boards isn't going to cut it. And the winner, the great one again, Wayne Gretzky. Beats Reggie Lemelin into the net. Let's celebrate, right? Nope, that old red line rule haunts us again. Sorry, Gretz. In the category of arena testers, second runner-up, Mark Howe, who tests the glass at the Meadowlands Arena. Of course, Mark Howe did decide to use a New Jersey player's head to help him out. The first runner-up, Winnipeg Jets, Sean Cronin, who tests the Magnets at Winnipeg Arena. Now, the Magnets are effective, but it's got to be awful tough on the shoulders, Sean. And the winner, Toronto Maple Leafs forward, John Kordak, who tests the gate at Maple Leaf Gardens. Well, okay, so the gate needs a little bit of work. Now, Kordick has spent a lot of time in the penalty box, but this wouldn't be considered his most graceful entry. Get that fixed, buddy. In the category all by himself, Mike Keenan, who would have been great as a baseball manager, as the right-hander Belfour will come in in relief of the left-hander Millen, Millen went five complete innings, gave up seven earned runs, and that's all for him. Now, wait a minute. No, now they want Belfour out, and I believe it's going to be the short right-hander. Jacques Clouche, yes, it's going to be Clouche, I believe. Well, no, wait, Millen's out, but it looks like, yes, it's going to be Clouche coming in. It's hard to tell exactly what's going on here. I know Greg Millen can't figure it out. So there you have it, the first annual Dope Slap Awards. Now, I'll be the first to admit that hockey is a brutal game, but I also firmly believe that hockey can be culturally enriching. Hockey has beauty, grace, coordination, and style. In fact, I would even compare hockey to the ballet.
I've always felt that hockey and music kind of go hand in hand. So it's a very special treat. Joining us to count down the NHL's top 10 videos is a very close, personal friend of mine, Mr. Casey Kasem. I'm Casey Kasem, and welcome to the NHL's top 10 video countdown. Moving up to number 10 this week from the number 13 spot is Wayne Gretzky with me and Mrs. Jones. Moving up four positions to the number nine spot is Denny Savard with I'm Coming Home. Moving down two spots to the number eight spot this week is Yari Curry with Please Release Me. Holding solid this week, the number seven spot is Emil Francis with The Year of the Cat. Dropping two positions to the number six spot is Ken Linsman with The Year of the Rat. And moving up four spots to the number five spot is Al Arbor with the great Barbara Streisand remake of The Way We Were. At the number four position this week is Bruce McNall with the hit Money Talks. And rocketing 17 positions up the charts this week is Cam Neely at number three with Tough Enough. And now for a surprise. Bumped off the number one spot for the first time in 15 years is Don Cherry's I'm Not Wild About Harry. Now debuting this week at the number one spot is a young man that came to the United States from Australia back in 1973. And after years of struggling in the music industry, has finally recorded a number one hit. Now here on Minor League Records performing his number one hit, the NHL rap is the new hot artist, No Pro. Enough, I got a story to tell. It's about the great names from the NHL. We got all the top players that you love to see, like Yaz, Boom Boom, the great Fred G. We got Rockets, big and small, the big M, little M, and Dennis Hall. Screamer, Squid, Stumpy, and Top, Mush, Mess, Yari, Curry, and Doc. The Hockey, the Golden Jet, Famous Sons, Mark and Brett. We got all the stars of the defensive core, like Fork, Tommy, and Bobby York. We got Foster, Danny, Bob, and Harry, and everybody knows McLean and Jerry. We move the guys who work the lines, like Hogan, Carey, and Asseltine. The guys who stand up tall and go like Patrick, Cheesy, and Tony O. Terry, Gump, Reese, and Bernie, Turk, Doc, Mr. Goley, and Bernie. Big Bird, Hound Dog, Moose and Hammer Black Body with Jack and Sean with Slap I just finished up the NHL rap And look for this young hot artist in the years to come I'm Casey Kasem for the NHL's Top 10 Video Countdown Reminding you to keep your stick on the ice and keep reaching for the stars Now back to John Ralph Actually, it's, uh, it's Jim, but uh, <laughs> thank you, Casey. You know, one of the things I found, especially while playing hockey down in the United States, was that a lot of people did kind of tend to think hockey players were uh, stupid. And <laughs> naturally, this offended me quite a bit. So my research staff and I went to great lengths to prove to you that hockey players are indeed a very intellectual breed. I don't know, as, as long as I'm talking about hockey, uh, I should be all right. Well, you know, I don't know. Uh, yeah, at, uh, at the start of the year, I didn't know uh, really what was going on. I just went to training camp. Did you want to be a Leaf? Uh, well, not, uh, I don't want to say not really, but I, I wanted to go anywhere. Well, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not really sure. I don't, 
Uh, we're not making any excuses for ourselves. Uh, we've had a tough start. Uh, it's a big game for us. We've been struggling a little bit. We had a lot of injuries, and we got off to a good start, but uh, in the second period, the Leafs seen to pour it on. Got a couple funny goals, and uh, the one at the end there where it went in off my stick. So it's, uh, but we got, you know, we, we just got to battle back and, uh, you know, get, get a good start in the third period, and I think we can come back and win the game. Well, we come up here to get two points. Uh, I mean, the bottom line is getting two points, and, um, you know, Two points means a lot to us, and uh, we, we're just going to try to get it in whatever way we can. <clears throat> All you can do is just work hard and, um, you know, try to get it going. But we got a good bunch of guys there. We got a good hockey club. Like I said, we've had a lot of injuries and stuff, so it's uh, it's been a little struggle the last little while. But you know, uh, we got a good bunch of guys on the team. We got some good leaders on the team. So uh... there's a good bunch of guys here, and um, you know, we just got to keep working and work ourselves out of this little slump right now, and uh... try to continue to work hard and. We just got to forget about it and continue to play and score a couple goals ourselves. Let's take a look at that goal now, and perhaps you can uh, describe it for us as uh, we see it. Well, Jimmy Johnson and I were just fighting for the puck, and I managed to beat him to it. And uh, I saw Colin go into the net, and I just faked, and Coffee just kind of stood up. And, you know, I just shot it in the, you know, it wasn't really a hard shot. I just shot at the net and went in. Let's take a look at your second goal of the game. As it turned out, it was the tying goal that tied the game at four. Yeah, here Igor made the play out in front, and Dougie Smith took a lot of the traffic out in front. I just got the rebound and happened to flip it over the shoulder there of the goaltender, and yeah, that was the goal. <laughs> Sometimes when there's an extra body there, it confuses the defenseman. I was surprised when he dropped it to me, but uh, with a full head of steam, I can, I can uh, get a little, stump, a little steam behind it. Things are going well. The puck's going in the net. Um, but we've played much stronger in the last five or six games. Uh, uh, we're happy with that. Well, that's a tough question to answer. You put me on the spot right now. Uh, well done. Thanks, Ron. <laughs> While we're on the subject of intelligence, uh, NHL referees. I mean, uh, <laughs> let's be honest with each other. These guys aren't exactly the most intelligent life form on this planet. And to prove it to you, I was asked to do an interview with referee Ron Hogarth last winter. But it proved to be so embarrassing to the on-ice officials that it had to be pulled from going on the air. So here's an interview, never before seen, until now. Hi, Jim. How you doing? Ron Hogarth. Sure. <clears throat> you ready? The score once again at the end of two periods, the Toronto Maple Leafs 5, the Pittsburgh Penguins 1, and we are joined here in the second intermission by veteran NHL referee Ron Hogarth. And Ron, uh, we've seen two pretty tough periods so far tonight. Uh, what can we look forward to in period number three? Uh, well, Jim, we just go out and give 100%, and hopefully the, the teams will play within the rules. Sure, uh, Ron, but uh, uh, that is a little bit cliche. I mean, you are the man in charge. Uh, you, you've really got be the one that takes the bull by the horns here. Well, Jim, now that you put it that way, um, I'll just say that the officials and I, we don't really just look uh, at this as a merely a game. We kind of view the NHL as athletics on one level, but also as true human dynamics and cultural interaction on another. Um, the ebb and the flow of hockey viewed on a cosmic plane is truly a, a microcosm of life itself. Well, uh, uh, sh sure, uh, Ron, I, I suppose. Uh, but what about uh, the two double minors you called right in the final minute of the second period and, uh, of course, the 83 majors handed out in this hockey game so far? Well, now, Jim, surely that uh, a bit of tension when considered on a global perspective is not unlike early democracy. And uh, the struggle that Greek society finally resolved through fair and open debate. Um, Throughout the ages, mankind has confronted conflict and, frankly, resolving questions of judgment has always fascinated me. Uh, Plato spoke of fairness, Freud explored neurosis, and uh, basically, I called it the way I saw it. Well, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I suppose uh, so, Ron. Uh, I, I guess maybe one of the things our viewers would be interested in knowing is uh, what the on-ice officials actually talk about uh, between periods in their dressing room. Uh, maybe you could fill us in a little bit on that. It's interesting, Jim, that you should bring that up. Um, 
The Linesman and I usually discuss a variety of uh, issues. The Middle East conflict, uh, how the development in uh, Eastern Europe will affect world economics, and just in the last intermission, we'll get into global warming and what our environment will be like in the future. In fact, did you know that with the unchecked use of the aerosols, the ozone layer will deteriorate at the rate of 17.2% over the next 10 years? Uh, actually, Hoagie, that's 17.4%, uh, uh, but I'm, I'm sure a lot of people screw that one up, huh? <laughs> Uh, anyway, Ron Hogarth, we're out of time. Thanks so much for joining us and this intermission. Uh, good luck the rest of the way. We'll be back with a third period of play after this. 17.2%. <laughs> That's brutal. Did my nose grow when I did that? Hey, a lot of people screw that one up. <laughs> we can't use that, can we, boys? Not a chance. Well, uh... <laughs> You can be the judge of that. You know, a lot of people ask me, Jim, how did you become a, a big league hockey player? Well, for me, the dream began back in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario in the early 60s. You know, I still remember the first pair of skates my father ever. The following is an election update. We now take you to the National Press Gallery and our new Prime Minister, Donald S. Cherry. Ladies and gentlemen, the Prime Minister-elect, the right and bearable Donald S. Cherry. Well, I guess I'll tell you something. It's uh, about time, I like to say, uh, Canada came to their senses. We have one minute, Mr. And, Prime uh, Minister. And stuff like that. Uh, I'll tell you something. It's going to be great. I feel sorry for the other guy there, uh, Mulroney, or what was his name there? Mulroney. Right? Mulroney, you should Mulroney, know. Mulroney. Uh, have ties. I'll tell you something. Uh, it's too bad, but I'd like to declare... Right now, that uh, Canada is a superpower. 30 we're seconds, superpower. briefly, Mr. We're Prime We're going to be right up there with the biggies, and I'll tell you, we're going to be tough. And uh, you got to love me and stuff like that, because I'm a great leader. Thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. We have time for a few quick questions from the floor. Tom Miller, uh, Reuters, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, your position on the uh, GST. I'll tell you something, uh, not a lot of people uh, there know uh, what the GST is, uh, so i like to explain it. The GST happened in the mid-70s era, I like to call it the Great Swedish Tragedy, when uh, Salming and uh, Hammerstrung, or whatever that guy's name, Hammerstrung, uh, whatever, uh, came over, and uh, I'll tell you, we're sending them all back, they're all going back, and it's called the New Free Trade, we're trading those guys back to Sweden for free. Uh, thank you very much for that effort, Mr. Prime Minister. Yes? Jennifer Brown, ABC News. On the Meets Accord, I'll tell you something, uh, not a real big fan of that. Uh, what is, that's an import car too, isn't it? Uh, mileage isn't great, and uh, besides, I drive a Lincoln, a big tough car, and uh, forget the Accord, no, stay away from it. One more before you hit the road. Yes? Mr. Prime Minister, a statement on the situation with the Mohawks in Quebec. Uh, the Mohawks uh, in Quebec this year, I'll tell you, uh, they're gonna be tough. I uh, gotta love them and stuff like that, especially now they got uh, Chelios. Uh, okay, the that's all the time and, uh, we have, Mr. Prime Minister. Get in trouble. You know Thank what? you very much. Incidentally, you don't have to stop eating square meals just because you're going to a meeting in the Oval Office. I tell you something, I should have got rid of this guy when I had the chance. Unbelievable. Haunt me around like this. And it was then that I knew that goaltending would always be in my blood. <laughs> I'm sure we're all familiar with the sounds of the game of hockey. A booming slap shot, a crunching body check. But what a lot of people never get to hear are the conversations that go on at ice level. And to be quite honest with you, I think you're going to be surprised. Hey, Denny, you got a phone call. Who is it? It's your wife. Nah. Oh, boy, I'm probably going to be in trouble again. Shut up, McRimmon. Hello? Wait. We oui, hello. Annie, yeah, I'll uh, take the garbage uh, tomorrow out. Yeah. Great Italian place upstairs. Unbelievable. Yeah, I'll meet you up there. Oh, uh, is that just down from the Chinese place? Because the Chinese place is the other way. No, no, no. It's uh, downstairs uh, or upstairs, somewhere around there. Yeah, we'll meet you over there. Yeah, it's going to be great. Anyway, whatever you decide, Chinese, Italian, it doesn't matter. I'll drive. 
Anyway, McQueen comes over the fence on the bicycle. It's absolutely unbelievable. Great movie, The Great Escape. Read it. What does your guy say? I say sell, sell. No, he says buy, buy, buy. We gotta sell, we gotta sell. And, and then they shoot old Taylor right at the end. <laughs> It's all right, kid. It's only a movie. It's, the dog's fine. He's going to be all right. <laughs> oh, but he's dead. Oh, the hell is dead. <laughs> Honey, I tell you, I'll shovel the snow off the driveway tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Billy, you see the blonde in the sweater up behind the bench? Yeah, she's after you, but her friend likes me. So why don't we meet them after the game, all right? Yeah, it'll be great. Bye. Yeah, I know. Milk, diapers, uh, bread, and egg. Okay. Look, Tucky, you tell him. He's got to apologize first. I'm not making the first move. I can't believe it. I come in here, they spill mustard all over my good jacket. I'm sitting up here without a stupid jacket. Unbelievable. Wow. I hate this place. Ah. Anyway, guys, I got to tell you about this. Global warming. Yeah, the ozone is getting killed by aerosol cans. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you guys hear about that global warming thing? My senior Wentz's impersonation. Not bad, eh? I can't believe I'm in this stupid video. Out of all the videos to be in, unbelievable. Huh. Oh, well, it's publicity. I am not crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm not, not, not crazy. Get over here. Get over here. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Look at the camera with your own eyes, huh? Hoggy, are you serious about this global warming thing? Yeah, yeah, this is bad. I right, Savvy, guess how long it's been since I've washed my hands? Yeah, three months. All right, push, push, we're almost there. Come on, one more. Yes! You've given birth to a 200-pound baby Blackhawk. Sorry, fellas, uh, I gotta get going home. So that's hockey talk. But I also realize that talk is cheap, and throughout the course of this program, I've kind of got caught up in uh, going on about some of the things of my career that, that made me quite proud. But now as a special bonus, I've brought with me a tape, a highlight tape of some of the great moments of my pro hockey career. Now here I am leading the troop side of the ice for the big game. What's a short side? Wait, uh, okay, oh yeah, watch this one. The right leg steals a goal. Watch right here. Wait a minute, hey, what it? Wait, this isn't clear. Aw, oh, come on. What? Is this a joke? Hey, come on, fellas. Pull the tape. Pull it. Quit goofing around. Pull the tape. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really sorry about the screw up here. Uh, do we have the, the highlight thing, the tape I brought, queued up? Is it ready to go? Sorry, kid. We're out of time. Wrap <laughs> it up, will you, Jim? Uh, there's a little problem here. We've gone a, a little bit long. Uh, could we show it uh, while we're rolling the credits? Just do the wrap. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much for joining me for my look at hockey. A brutal game. Roll it. Tape, please. <laughs> There's no tape back here. What are you talking about? Set center on a quick break, rated on goal, shoots, save, Ralph, unbelievable. Now the Jets regroup, they're bringing it rated on goal, shot, one save, Ralph, another save, Ralph. Do you believe Jim Ralph tonight? Unbelievable. Now it's Simpson gathering speed over the line. Simpson dropping it for Anderson, Ralph. And it's now the left side, here's Hawkins shooting, save, Jim Ralph. And what a rookie season this kid Ralph is having.
This has been a presentation of Molestar Communications.